Now there is something called as severe preeclampsia and this comes as a question many times. It's also very important to understand and to identify what is severe preeclampsia because the management is different from non-severe. So there is no term mild preeclampsia. Remember it is called as some people say mild preeclampsia but it's actually non-severe and severe. Okay, non-severe means it is all right. It is not that bad and we can wait. Okay, so basically this classification helps us decide when to deliver the patient or when to terminate the pregnancy because the definitive management of preeclampsia is to deliver the mother okay so to determine when to deliver we have to know whether we are dealing with non-severe preeclampsia or severe preeclampsia and to know this we need to know the features of severe preeclampsia so the first part is the diastolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure in severe preeclampsia would be more than or equal to 110 millimeters per mercury in non-severe it will be less than 110 millimeters of mercury the second is systolic blood pressure in severe preeclampsia is more than or equal to 160 millimeters per mercury in non-severe it is less than 160 millimeters of mercury so your case case scenario will be like this a woman comes she's 25 years old her blood pressure is 160 by 110 so when you see that 160 by 110 it means you are dealing with severe preeclampsia okay and that management will differ from non-severe preeclampsia how we, how it will differ we will discuss in the next few slides the third is proteinuria and this is very important because here is where major changes have happened. Initially it was said that a high degree of proteinuria means severe preeclampsia but now it is not important anymore. Okay, So the degree of proteinuria no longer determines the severity of preeclampsia. Very important to understand because this has also been asked as a question. This is recent guidelines of 2018 proteinuria no longer matters in determining the severity it is only used for the definition for defining preeclampsia it is no longer used to determine the severity okay the fourth is headache so see you see these two all these are together headache visual disturbances and upper abdominal pain okay these three are signs what are they they're impending symptoms of eclampsia we just discussed this the impending symptoms of eclampsia okay and these will be present in severe preeclampsia they'll be absent here okay so any of the impending symptoms if they are there that means she is a woman who is having severe preeclampsia okay then if you see here oliguria okay and serum creatinine come together this is basically telling us that the renal function is bad so if she is having oliguria or if her creat is high this is again a sign of severe preeclampsia okay so oliguria presence of oliguria and serum creatinine more than 1.1 is usually taken as the cutoff is a sign of severe preeclampsia okay here there will be no oliguria and creat will be normal okay another thing we see is in investigations of preeclampsia we see the always see the platelet count okay platelet count is important because thrombocytopenia less than one lakh okay is seen in or is a sign of severe preeclampsia it will be normal in non-severe preeclampsia also thrombocytopenia is a component of help syndrome which we will discuss okay help syndrome is basically hemolysis plus elevated liver enzymes plus low platelet count so what is help help is a acronym it means hemolysis plus elevated liver enzymes plus low platelets so hemolysis plus elevated liver, liver enzymes plus low platelets so if there's thrombocytopenia it is a sign of severe preeclampsia what else here comes the liver enzyme. So these are basically components of HELP syndrome. So again, raised liver enzymes, raised ASTLT or SGOT, SGPT. If it is there in your clinical scenario, it means she is going into HELP syndrome. It is a sign of severe preeclampsia. They will be normal in non-severe preeclampsia. Next is fetal growth restriction. If it is present, okay, it is again a sign of severe preeclampsia. That means there's, there's so much deficiency of blood going to the uterus that the fetus is not growing anymore. 
and there will be no fetal growth restriction in non severe preeclampsia and the last is pulmonary edema is again a feature of severe preeclampsia so remember these points these are very important okay because all your clinical scenarios in hypertension in preeclampsia they will give you a feature or the presence or the absence of one of these features and then they will ask you what is the next best step or how will you treat this patient so if you know the severe signs of preeclampsia or symptoms of preeclampsia it becomes very easy to understand what to do next okay